Well, we're getting ready to go for a boat ride today, and the first thing you do is you always come down in the engine room and make sure everything's okay. So we've gone through this vessel's pair of Detroit 8V92 diesels. These are 700, 735 shaft horsepower, 736 cubic inch engines, twin turbocharged, and supercharged, or with a blower. So we've already gone through the engine, we've checked our fluids, we've checked all of our uh, uh, levels, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to fire it up. After we start the engine, we're going to check for starter disengagement and just feel around to make sure we've got cold water flow going out the exhaust. So we're going to make sure we're ready to go. And you get to hear some of that Detroit sound. This is a 1991 uh, Tollycraft 61, and uh, we spent quite a bit of time working on this boat. Got a little bit of weight going by, of course it's a, another Sea Ray owner giving us a display of speed. Uh, we basically rebuilt this dash using a whole new panel and installed two 23 inch high definition monitors. Uh, we're basing this on the Ray Marine E-series wide electronics package, so this is an example of their remote station at work. Um, the left screen is a Noble Tech product running off a Sony Bio Tower. So we have two um, redundant navigation systems on this boat. Uh, the Raymarine screen is controlled with the uh, compact keyboard, which you see right here. Uh, this is not a touch screen. We do have a touch screen upstairs on this boat as the master station. Uh, up above, we have a new panel with the ship's existing standard uh, hailer system, an ICOM 604 VHF with a remote mounted microphone, and the Raymarine autopilot control. We chose the uh, 8002 control uh, because of owner's preference. He wanted to have the knob rather than the new style ST70 control head running the SeaTac NG network. Um, we chose the system because it was easy to use, and here in Vancouver, uh, there's a service center for Ray Marine located right in Vancouver, so if we ever have any problems, it gets corrected right away. Uh, it's uh, the only system we tend to use on both this size. It's worked out very well so far. We remoted the uh, ICOM microphone down here, so we wouldn't have any wires dangling in the captain's field of view. We remoted the microphone for the uh, standard loud hailer down here as well. We have the wireless remote for the Ray Marine Autopilot and the wireless remote we supplied for the windlass on this vessel. So it all worked out really well. And we're running the boat on the Autopilot right now. So you can see how quick the redraw is on this uh, E-Series wide. And if we want to add, of course, our radar to that, it's very simple. Two keystrokes. The radar icon begins to turn. radar chart synchronization on top of the chart. The purple, of course, is the radar. The icon is indicating the radar is turning. Our AIS is on. Our sonar is operating. We have a GPS fix, and the autopilot is integrated with our screen. Now, if we wanted to zoom out, once again, a nice radar contact. Um, some people find this a bit intimidating because, of course, it's just a bunch of blobs on a screen. So. It's uh, nice to be able to have the choice of going to the full uh, radar overlay function, which is quite easy to do on this uh, E120 wide Ray Marine based system. Uh, you'll notice on the screen we have an icon here, which is flashing red. That's part of our automatic identification system. We've equipped this vessel with an AIS 500 transceiver. We can designate it and find out the name of the vessel, where he is, his speed and course, what he's doing, his destination. So if you ever found that you wanted to contact a commercial vessel or another vessel, you can easily do so by querying it with your AIS system. We're trying to zoom in on the bow staff right now. Uh, we've just come under the First Narrows Bridge in Vancouver Harbor. And uh, this is a Raymarine um, solenoid autopilot. It's a gyro pilot. And just trying to demonstrate how accurate the course keeping is in this area, which is quite a lot of current. There's about three knots of current running right now. Um, we're doing about nine knots, 
and the currents are rather conflicting at this point and you can see how tight the course keeping on the vessel is at this point. Another thing we did on this uh, refit was to provide the owners with a redundant depth sounder. We have a main depth sounder obviously tied to our Raymarine E-wide system which sees down to in excess of a thousand feet here in British Columbia which is pretty good. Uh, but we did provide a uh, ST40 depth system down here. Um, this is here in the salon and so uh, there's a repeater in the pilot house. It's on a separate power source so this will provide a separate depth reading for the vessel as a backup to our main system. In addition we located the transducer for this depth sounder uh, in the rear of the vessel so when the owner is dropping his anchor and backing up to a stern tie he can watch this one and get uh, a depth indication which is uh, quite a bit farther behind his main depth transducer uh, by about 30 feet so he can keep an eye on the back of the boat. Uh, it was just a good idea to add this I thought with this package. Okay so we're approaching our boathouse, it's been a good day out. Uh, we just got to get her back in in one piece so before we approach our boathouse we're going to put our stabilizers into the center position. We're going to test our bow thruster. Functional. Both main engines are responding to their transmission controls, so we'll head in. Let's see if we can get this thing in there without trading paint with anybody. Nice thing about a 61 Tolly Craft is it's really a sweetheart of a boat to handle. We're setting our rudder to the center on our Raymarine Autopilot control head. The trick is not to let the momentum build up. as easily as she can. We stand by our radar now so we're not transmitting. Radar returns to the aforesaid ship's position with this product which is nice, we don't have to worry about it. Starboard engine. Little thruster. sneak up a wee bit farther and stop. Well on this boat we put on the, uh, the six foot Raymarine digital open scan uh, which is a four kilowatt radar 72 mile and over here to its left we have the uh, GPS for our AIS system and balancing that over to the right we have the GPS for the main navigation system. Uh, we did that with the power mount both for looks and for utility to kind of make the system look like it belonged here on the boat. I think we've succeeded reasonably well. This has been a very satisfying project for us, uh, made all the more so by the fact that our clients on this project were uh, really exceptional to deal with. Um, we finished this project on time and on budget and we're still able to give the clients uh, quite a number of days of included uh, training so they would learn how to use their equipment. Uh, one of the days we were out was a really exceptionally rough day and uh, it was really exciting to be out on this 61 Tolly craft in some heavy weather. Uh, one of the nice things also is the clients have given us the carte blanche to operate the boat as we see fit to maintain the boat for them and have allowed us to continue with the ongoing maintenance of the vessel uh, based on the trust and goodwill we developed with our electronics refit project here.